Welcome to the PLZ Soccer Show. Simon Donnelly's here, Alan Ruff, as ever, on my left-hand side. Lots to talk about on the programme today. Neil Lennon, the centre of attention, he's going to pick up an SFA ban, not only for his criticism of the referee, but for his outburst trackside. He was sent to the stand. He regrets his reaction to being sent to the stand. I don't think he regrets his disagreement with the referee on the decision of the penalty, which I think now is going to be lost from that game at the weekend, Simon. Yes, yeah, I can see it's, it's not a penalty and I can see uh, or understand Neil's reaction to that. Uh, he's broke every rule that's going there in terms of you know confronting the referee and gesturing towards the referee. Uh, but being an ex-coach on the touchline, I can see and I can understand these frustrations. Yeah. Have you ever been that uh, animated? No, I was usually the calm one. It was usually Darren Jackson that I had to calm down. Uh, but I can understand, you know, his team are 2-0 up in the game and looking as if they're cruising to win. Kilmarnock scored a fantastic uh, goal to get back in the game and then the, the dubious equaliser with the penalty, I can I can fully mm -hmm. understand his, his reaction to it. Yeah, Um Ruffy, he's going to get hammered. I think, especially with the previous uh, taken into consideration, although Neil, uh, you know, has shown some remorse today, I just don't think it's going to be enough. No, I don't think it'll be enough either. We've already seen uh, Dick Campbell getting hammered. Dick was a wee bit uh, worse than, than, <laughs> than Neil's. But uh, when you're, as uh, Simon said, every individual on the touchline is different. There's people who can keep everything in check. As people can't, they just let it go. One of my uh, favourite uh, moments of somebody losing it was Martin O'Neill and the remember when he was bounding up the oh. track like a kangaroo with yeah. his hands in his head. I thought that was absolutely hilarious. But uh, no, these are things that happen in football games, and and as Simon will tell you, you know, it, it could be the most mild manner person who just snaps at the wrong time. But Neil set such high standards. He's already told everybody they're going to be second and, and losing two points at the weekend would put a dent on that. Yeah, I even remember the guy's name. Do you? Um, Amoroso <coughs> was the guy's name for Juventus, which prompted Martin uh, at the end to give an interview. I think Martin Geisler was actually the reporter and he goes, shocking, shocking decision. It's the only way to sum it up and that's what managers do. They live, breathe and kick it and if it goes against them and I think Celtic played really well against Juventus that night and uh, ended up losing. But... I think Neil Lennon might have to savour being in the dugout for the games coming up, the next couple at least, before the hammer comes down on him. Could be a lengthy spell in the stand. You can give us your thoughts at PLZ Soccer on Twitter, facebook.com forward slash PLZ Soccer. Uh, that's one aspect of uh, the Scottish news today, of course. Uh, the other one, everybody's been talking about it, passing comment, uh, is of course the standard of refereeing. Graham Murty mentioned maybe full-time referees. I just think the pressure now, Simon, is on VAR. I think despite our lack of cash, we have to find money from somewhere to lower the percentage rate of mistakes. Yeah, I think VAR uh, will prove to be worthwhile You know, in certain decisions and games. Even that itself has proved uh, recently You know that it's not 100%. You know, I, I watched a Man United game recently and it was Mata uh, deemed offside with his right knee, I believe, you know, on VAR, which I disagreed with. Uh, I just think it's a difficult uh, job, you know. I've refereed games in, in training, and you can never please everybody. Uh, I think there's always going to be mistakes made. And unfortunately, you know, Hibs were on the end of one at the weekend. OK, um, we'll talk about Hibs in action uh, tomorrow night, but uh, tonight... Uh, Rangers have to try and keep the momentum going. It was a good win against Hearts. Wes Fotheringham has mentioned, Graham Murty's mentioned that regardless of what Celtic are doing, they just have to try and keep winning all the way. You mentioned yesterday you think Rangers will win uh, against Celtic at Ibrox. Ruffy, you've gone for it early despite not even knowing if there are any key injuries. You just put your neck out there mm. right away early, um, which we think is just slightly foolhardy. But if they're going to win against Celtic at Ibrox, they're surely going to wipe the floor with St. Johnston and McDermott Park. You would think so after the performance at the weekend. I thought they, were, they dominated that game. And uh, Wes Fotheringham, I know I'm saying they dominated, but Wes Fotheringham was a big part of that because he had two really good saves early on in the game to keep Rangers in the game. Uh, but after that, I think Rangers just controlled it. And I think Hearts were very fortunate. They only scored two goals. But they're in a good goal-scoring vein just now. I don't think it'll be as much up at St. Johnson. Uh, I always say that midweek games, you know, when the weather's 
pretty iffy. You know, you never know what's going to happen. But I think Rangers will come out to one winners in the end of this one. OK, uh, St Johnston had to get that win at the weekend. They were on a bad run. Uh, now just one win in the last five matches. Uh, but that uh, Ross County win, I think, eases what many people are looking at as a wee bit of pressure for Tommy, right? Because it, it wasn't going uh, as well as it should have been in February. Yeah, but on the back of a good point at Celtic Park as well, uh, they'll hope that they've turned the corner. You know, they're not out of the woods in terms of uh, being at the bottom of the, the Premier League at the moment. It's a difficult one, you know. Uh, they're at home against Rangers, but Rangers are in good form. And I I fully expect Rangers to go up there and get the three points. OK, so uh, Rangers for a win uh, for all our panellists. I think Rangers will win it comfortably as well. Um, what about Hearts against Kilmarnock? Kelly, just the forum team at the moment, aren't they? Brilliant. You know, they get caught cold at the weekend off Hibs in the first half, going, going in at half-time 2-0 down. Uh, but full credit to Stevie Clark and his boys to get back into it. You know, a fantastic goal by Jones gets them back into the game. And then the, the dubious penalty that we talk about. But Kilmarnock are really the form team. I think they're the top of the form table. And I fancy that they go to Tynecastle and get something. I think they'll, they'll win it in a, a tight 1-0. Yeah. Unbeaten in five. Boyd, I have to give Boydy credit because um, at the end of the day, you know, he's he, he, he's marmite to some people, <laughs> love him or hate him. I, I love the fact that when he scores, he annoys the opposition fans, Ruffy. That's my type mm. of player. Let's have a dig at the fans for yeah. a wee laugh. Yeah, and the important thing is, year on year, he scores, you know, and scores lots of goals. You know, he's obviously the record goal scorer in our league, and he keeps on doing it. And I think the good thing about it is the commandant manager has now got a lot of people round about him who are prepared to do most of the running. All he has to do is use his experience in the box and be at the right place at the right time. And that, that's actually what he's doing. Uh, again, he'll be a handful for Hearts. But I, I think Hearts will bounce back for the Rangers game and get a draw out of this one. Yeah, I think it's going to be a draw as well. I love the way he makes it out as if Steve Clark's some visionary putting runners around Chris Boyd. I think Walter Smith put runners around Chris Boyd 10 years ago. Uh, it didn't change then, but he's been on great form. Brilliant form. Uh, <coughs> as Ruffy says, right place at the right time. He's made that, uh, you know, he's the, the top thing in his career right through. Uh, I seen him score one of his backside the other week, and even the penalty at the weekend, you know, a little bit lucky, the keeper saves it and he, he, he sclaffs the, the rebound in. But, you know, as, he's, as Ruffy says, he's a, a top notchman at uh, the Premier, uh, Premier League level. And I think he can surpass, you know, the 20 goals this season. Yeah, 20 goals. Um, I mean, he has done that before. I, I tipped him for that. And, and basically, when he came up to have a chat with us, Ruffy, uh, you... <laughs> You said there wasn't a catch chance. <laughs> you should have seen his face <laughs> when I said Ruffy doesn't think you'll get to any goals. I thought he was going to. I was going to. Th I thought he was going to take you there and then, Ruffy. Yeah, I thought so as well when he went. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, he has. He has. He's come up with the goods and uh, good luck to him. Yeah, absolutely. Said with all the sincerity there from Ruffy. Um, okay, uh, so we're picking them out there. What about the three games on the Wednesday? I might as well get your thoughts on it because um, we're going to talk about Dubai shortly because you're off on your holly bags. Just as just, just as the beast from the east is coming in and the snow and the dreadful weather, Simon Donnelly's bailing out of the country. So suddenly Celtic against Dundee. Dundee needed to take something at the weekend and I, I think Motherwell held out. Dundee had chances. Yeah, just on the back of the, the Partick result the week before, I think Dundee, the frustrating thing is they seem to get one good result and then two or three bad ones. Uh, it's kept them down the bottom of the table for more or less mm. the whole season. I think there's four teams down there really sweating it out now, but I don't expect them to get anything at Celtic Park. I think on the back of a really good result at, at Pataudry, I think Celtic will kick on. Yeah, Do you think it's the right decision from Scott Brown to retire? I don't know. I uh, understand it, but I would like to see him persevere for a few more uh, games with Scotland, I think, as a leader and all the qualities that he brings, you know, they've, they've been a good one, you know, a good influence for the young boys that are coming through. Yeah. Um, do we have a future Scotland captain in Kieran Tierney? I think a future, yeah. Uh, I think it depends what kind of players that Alec McLeish picks, you know, if he is the most experienced of the ones that are going to end up in the eleven. You don't yeah. think he should be? No, I think, I'm thinking if, if, if Fletcher's there, I don't know if Fletcher is still... Uh, an international player, but I mean, Alec might look at him and say he's the kind of guy I need around all these young players. And if he was just given a sort of a central role with these players around about him, all I'm saying is that if, if he's on the park, he's the captain before Tierney. Yeah. Okay, we got there in the end. Um, okay, Celtic Dundee. Simon reckons Celtic will win it. 
Yeah, I think so as well. Again, I think there'll be a rotation in the Celtic team, but I still think they'll be too good enough. I think the Gollum part for Neil McCann is they are creating chances and not scoring. You know, that's the worst thing. You know, if you weren't creating chances, it'd be more of a worry. But I don't think they'll get many chances at Parkhead. OK, Hibs against Hamilton. Uh, Neil will be in the dugout getting used to the seat and then saying goodbye to it for a long while, I fear. Um, but I think, the you know, middle to front, Hibs are a joy to watch. Uh, I'm not being overly critical of their back line, but they still let you score from time to time. And a great start at the weekend, and I think they had a, a really good chance to, to make it 3-0 and probably would have buried the game. Uh, I think that's probably led to the frustrations of Lenny in the second half. But at home against Hamilton, who, other than the weekend there, have been struggling, I think uh, Hibs will win this one. Yeah, I think it's going to be a, a comfortable win for your old side, Ruffy. Yeah, I think so as well, but I'm sure Hibs, uh, the supporters and the players will remember the last one when Hamilton went there and for some unknown reason they won quite comfortably. So you have to be aware of that. Sometimes you get a team who know how to play ag against you, but I don't think that's going to happen tomorrow night. I think Hibs will kick on and win 2 nothing. Are you uh, are you getting the style of him now? Do you see what happens? Eh? Twist it. Flip. It's a flip. It's it's absolutely fantastic. So let's see if he flips this one for Don's fans. It's it's, it's an art that he's got, and it's just basically he doesn't want to be not liked. That's it in a nutshell, by the way. Um, he wants to be able to go around the whole of Scotland, and people go, "There's Ruffy. He's a really nice guy." Um, he said something nice about us, but still tipped the other team to win by five goals. That's it in a nutshell. So, Ruffy, Motherwell against Aberdeen. This one is Don's trying to bounce back from two defeats, once against yeah. Hibs, one against Celtic. Derek McInnes said today that he thinks they deserve more from the game at the weekend. I'm not so sure. I don't agree with him. I did agree with him. I thought I thought Mother, uh, Aberdeen had chances. I thought that uh, in any given time during the game, if Aberdeen had took their chance, it might have put Celtic on the back foot. We'll never know that now. Celtic ran out with a good victory in the end. But Mother will have been a bogey team for, for Aberdeen throughout the last couple of years. When, when Aberdeen were chasing Celtic, they went to Fir Park and I think they got beat 4-2. You know, and that was the end of their challenge. So they'll be hoping they can go there and get a result. But I don't think they will. <laughs> <laughs> I think it will be one each. Yeah, one each. OK. Mm -hmm. uh, could have saved about 90 seconds there, Simon. But in the end... Yeah, I think I'll go with Ruffy. I think it'll be a draw. Uh, I think Aberdeen have always made, you know, a point of bouncing back for a, a bad result. But I just think Motherwell are, are strong at home at the moment. And a great result up at Dundee as well at the weekend. I think it'll be a draw. OK, two guys with a draw. I'll go Aberdeen for the win. Bouncing back. Shinny and Christie back in the side. Too much for Motherwell. Uh, so we'll go for the Dons for a win. OK, just before we go, um, Brendan Rodgers has been quoted as one of the potential uh, managers being considered if Arsene Wenger should get the bump. Do you think he'll get the bump if they don't win against Man City <coughs> at home? I think uh, I think he'll be under pressure. I think just the manner of the, the, the cup final at the weekend, I thought Arsenal were so flat, it was unbelievable uh, for such an important game. I'm a huge Arsene Wenger fan uh, and I feel sorry for him at the moment, but I think he'll be under severe pressure if they don't get a result. Yeah. Do you think Rodgers would get it? I don't know. I think he's, uh, the speculation there, he was linked with Chelsea last month, uh, going for back-to-back -back trebles. I think the focus is on that for him just now. Yeah, OK. Um, so, Ruffy, Simon's off to Dubai. He's going to play in a Scotland-England Legends game. You'd have thought, you know, when you think about goalkeepers that have played at three World Cups, 53 caps, made some wonderful saves along the way. I'm looking back and I'm thinking even even John Toshak has nightmares about that save that you tipped over the bar at Anfield when the place was mobbed. You led us to the World Cup in Argentina, albeit disgraced yourself. But nevertheless, um, you'd think the boy over here would have given you a call. Yeah, I mean, obviously the football was a big part of this trip in Dubai, but as you know, I've stopped, <laughs> I've st I've stopped drinking, so there's no point in me going. Yes. Uh, I, was just, I, was just, I was just about to say, no sooner had you said that than I look and I, I can see the snow outside our studios just coming in, uh, but there's not enough of it to stop Simon making it to the airport. Um, what kind of team have you got for Scotland against the England legends? Well, we won last year uh, with the same team, uh, albeit we've got Burchill in for Jackson, so a wee bit more pace up front, but uh, Charlie Miller... Andy McLaren, Robbie Winters, Ali McCoist, Andy Gorham, uh, and myself. Yeah. 
That's a good. That's a good. Is it a six a side? Yeah. No, it's eleven a side. It's eleven a side. Yeah. Yeah. So. We <laughs> We won 8-3 last year. Yeah, well, that's, that, that's a good one. Yeah, people pay to play, yeah, people pay. They pay to play with the Scotland team in England. Something uh, to be remembered, dare I say it, um, Burchill's in for Jackson. Jackson will not be happy about that. Uh, are you are you swapping pace for you know for skill? Because Jacko, is, he's got a good bit of skill on him. Jacko did well last year. Scored a couple of goals, yeah. Uh, but he's got prior engagement, so we brought in pace with yeah. Burchill. <laughs> By the way, let me just say as we as we sign off, Ruffy, the the fact that he's mentioned pace has got nothing to do with skill. That's a footballer's way of saying his touch is deplorable, but he can run fast. Anyway, uh, Burchie, all complaints to Simon Donnelly on Instagram. Uh, thanks to Simon. Uh, good luck to Scotland legends against England legends. Join us on tomorrow's PLZ Soccer Show. Barry Ferguson will be here with us. Not good enough to get picked for the for the legends. I think he overlooked it. I think he would have strolled into that team, but I think he overlooked it. Yeah, absolutely. Too right, he would have strolled into it. What a player. Uh, he'll be here tomorrow offering his insight into the games tomorrow, reflecting on St. Johnston Rangers and Hearts Kilmarnock from Ruffy, from Simon Donnelly, myself. Uh, thanks for watching.